just hit 2 a.m. Karbala time. So I would like to say salamu alaikum. And I'd like to welcome you guys to episode 17 of your favorite show, hashtag LNT, with the one and only Ahmed Ali coming to you live from this holy city of Karbala. Now, uh, this is the special Ramadan series. Uh, so that means there are a lot of giveaways that we're giving away. Uh, hashtag family is giving away. Uh, we're also giving away uh, a free trip to Karbala. So, but this is uh, good. But tonight, uh, we're talking about a trend that um, was introduced not a while ago. Um, uh, but I won't talk a lot about it. You know, it's, it's, it's a nice dress that makes some people or some individuals look good and attractive. But tonight, let's go and check out what's trending, and we'll be back to talk about this trend. So, ta -da. Once again, we do welcome everybody. Now, for tonight, what's trending? Um, interestingly, a, a new Italian prime minister has just uh, been in office, uh, but he's just a law professor. Um, that has no experience uh, in politics or um, in or held before a, a political position. Now, um, maybe he's uh, you know similar to Donald Trump, but I hope he's not. You know, this this guy looks better than Donald Trump. Um, uh, hopefully, they can you know flourish. But uh, Giuseppe, Giuseppe, his name. Um, it sounds way too Italian. Uh, but this guy was approved by uh, the political head office uh, of Italy's uh, presidential uh, of uh, president, uh, Sergio Mattarella. Um, so this guy, he's uh, a lot of people are praising him and a lot of people are saying, why is he in power? Uh, but eventually, um, he can probably do a lot of good stuff to Italy. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but you know it's it's good to see it's good to see that now what else is trending Zaydan yesterday we said that you know we gave the breaking news that Zaydan isn't coaching Real Madrid anymore um, so say bye bye to uh, Champions League uh, but uh, guess where he's going now you know after retiring from Real Madrid he's going to coach Qatar from today or from this month up until 2022 which is crazy because uh, Qatar is hosting the World Cup in 2022 um, and uh, Zaydan is coaching them up until that day. Um, now, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy uh, that they, they, they got Zaydan and how they uh, got him to do there, but it's um, for four years up until World Cup, they've paid him 176 million pounds. So that's, that's a lot. That's a lot, you know, for Zaydan. Uh, you, know, you know, Zaydan would not refuse that kind of uh, that kind of payment, that kind of deal. But you know, it's Qatar. You know, left or right, it's Qatar. Even if they get Zaydan, even if they get Ronaldo to, to, to coach them, they won't win. They won't win the World Cup. Um, that's just coming from me. Um, but anyways, let's take a very quick break and be back to talk about tonight's topic. Now, Allah has created the male and the female. Say wallah. What else? Allah has made the male different from the female. Say wallah. Say wallah. What else? Allah has created the female to be more attractive than the male. Not in all cases, but you know, a, a, there, there are a lot of attractive women, uh, and you know, everyone's beautiful in their own eyes or in the eyes of the ones who love them. But uh, we're not trying to get into that. But there has to be something for the attractive woman and women in general, because every woman, if they put on specific stuff, they look attractive. Allah has made something that covers that attractiveness, except for a few parts and that is the hijab now hijab even the term itself has turned global I mean if you open up Microsoft right now type in hijab Microsoft Word sorry Microsoft Word you type in hijab 
underline, you know, if, if you type in an error, there's, there's a red line underneath the word. It used to be under the word hijab or under some Islamic words, but now there's no red line underneath the word hijab. So we can see that the entire world has recognized this word as being um, an Islamic concept, an Islamic ideology, and it's, it's global. Hijab now is global, as we'll get to talk about later on. But for the last few years, hijab has become somewhat associated with fashion. As if you go on Instagram, if you go on Facebook, you see hundreds of pictures of you know hijabi women um, taking selfies, taking pictures in random hijabs, uh, and uh, you know different colors, different um, styles, different wraps. You even have hijab, um, you know, styles like the like the Mickey Mouse hijab, where you know she has the hijab covered and just her ears are popping out. Uh, and you have a lot of earrings or the convertible hijab where you know uh, subhanallah during uh, regular days and she's not wearing it or it's on her shoulders when quran comes up the hijab comes up or they or or this, this is actually very interesting the camel hump hijab this is crazy because uh, really especially for the girls that have big heads i all do respect to you guys uh, but you know you don't need an extra five kilos on your head you know looking like you, we, don't, we don't need that, you know, you already look good with a regular hijab, there's no need for the uh, extra extensions or whatever, the, the, the camel hump hijab. But tonight, our question for you guys is simply, very simple, in three, two, one, mashallah, they guys beat me today. Is the hijab turning into a fashion industry? Very simple question. Is hijab turning into a fashion industry? The question for tonight or sorry, the, the, the number for tonight is plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six. So participate by picking up the phone right now, opening WhatsApp, dial the number shown right there, and let us know what you think. Free call, no charge, via WhatsApp. Very easy. Call us during the live show. Uh, you can send us a voice message, a text message. Uh, we're also live on Facebook, so you guys go and check it out. We do apologize yesterday. We weren't live, but today, inshallah, we are live. Um, so you can go, comment. You know, put that thumbs up, share, because uh, for those who do participate, uh, malfunction downstairs. Uh, so, uh, all right, so participate, and that's it. All right, go. <laughs> Once again, we do welcome everyone for joining us tonight. We do apologize for that malfunction that happened before uh, before the break, but tonight. Very simple question for you guys. Is the hijab turning into a fashion industry? For me, I think it is. For you guys, if you think yes, let us know. If you think no, also let us know. If you think there are other ways, because other types of hijab, for me, I only have three up to now. If you think there's another uh, type of hijab, also let us know. Uh, I have the Mickey Mouse. I have the, uh, uh, the camel hump. And we have the convertible hijab. Other hijabs, let us know what's out there. Um, uh, but tonight, we're trying to talk about hijab. And is it turning into a fashion industry? Do participate and let us know. Names in this fishbowl for a chance to win a free trip. But hijab isn't just a matter of, of simply putting on a cloth over your head and, and saying that's hijab. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of behaving. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a way um, where you get to show who and what you are. What you are, what I mean by what you are, is like what you represent. And who you are is who you are deep inside. Now, basically, it constitutes an Islamic way of life. And it's a statement which should be, or that should portray the certain Islamic attitude. And this is very important for us, because honestly, if, if, if we were to come and look at what hijab is tonight, or, or uh, in, in our modern days, the 21st century, 2018, um, we'll be surprised to see what's out there. But the boundary of Islamic modesty, uh, uh, modest clothing, uh, have become blurred over the past few decades, um, primarily in the West because we see um, businesses and business owners um, uh, or the controversial ideologies within the West um, changing that concept making hijab into a fashion industry um, that you know and it's it's input within our daily lives because as men we like to change up our fashion also women they like to change up their fashion as well uh, but is it okay for you know 
Uh, right now we have a, a, a lot of uh, uh, brands that are coming out, which we'll get to talk about later on. But the idea behind modest clothing becoming a fashion industry seems to be taking way too far. What do I mean by that? If we were to look at the era where Islam, or if we were to look at the era where hijab was actually worn properly, and now, we're not saying it's not worn properly. What we're saying is there are a few ideas that we need to keep in mind um, regarding the concept of hijab. Um, money and power has changed a lot within the fashion industries, and we can see that. We can see how even a simple Islamic tradition, a simple uh, Islamic ideology or concept, hijab, um, has evolved from a simple hijab to a fashion industry. Now, businessmen, companies, and business owners, they noticed that there are a lot of Muslims out there, a lot of women, so what they need to give them back is something to make them look more attractive. Although they're attractive, uh, they need to give them something that makes them more attractive and, and it's good for business. It's very good for business. Now this is, this is surprising. An estimated Muslim spending on fashion is expected to be as, as, as much as $488 billion by 2019. Keep it, $488 billion. That's a booming business right there. That's a crazy business right there, as of 2019. If we were to go and look at some of the world companies that are known, uh, who have uh, introduced Islamic clothing within their lines, within their clothing lines, um, Nike, the huge American company, Nike, they introduced the hijab. That right there, the, the, the sportswear, uh, sports hijab right there. Um, and uh, it, it, looks, it looks decent. I don't know if uh, we'll get to see if that's, if that's allowed or not, but um, it, it looks decent. But um, the reaction that this item got um, was two sides. People were saying that, you know what, Nike's good uh, for its inclusiveness uh, for women, for Muslim women. And there were those who said, uh, no, uh, this is um, violating a woman's um, modest hijab. Um, who is right? You guys should let us know. Dial the number shown below and let us know. The question right there. Let us know what you think. But if you go, especially for the ladies watching us tonight, um, you, you know what I'm talking about. You go to H&M, you see hijab models. Um, even in, in, in the Ramadan flyers when they come out, um, you, you're going to see hijab models or hijabi models wearing the hijab and, you know, uh, showing off their hijab skills, uh, but if you go to Dolce and Gabbana, they also, you know, I follow them on Instagram, and um, their list of hijabs for for this year, 2018, is crazy. Um, they're, they're nice, but you know, um, they're, they're crazy. Uh, we have other uh, brands like uh, DKNY. You have uh, Tommy Hilfiger, who are also introducing Ramadan Islamic clothing for the Muslims, which is good. It's good. But there has to be taken, there's another step that Muslim women or Muslim guys uh, need to take in, in, in order to be fully uh, considered as hijab. But what do you guys think about the so-called hijab fashion influencers? These are, are women or, or girls, ladies that um, take a hundred of selfies, um, post them on Instagram, Facebook, wearing different styles of uh, head, head scarves and head coverings um, online, not aware um, that maybe it's okay for them. But for the girl that really wants to be modest, you know, we're not saying that uh, the, the, the girl that doesn't wear a proper hijab is not modest. No, no, I'm not here to say that. I'm here to say that there are specific guidelines within Islam which, are, which really need to be met. Now, one of the things that we have to understand is the, 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 the full understanding and, and the full concept uh, of hijab. Now, we are getting a few Facebook comments. We'll get them uh, on, uh, online, inshallah, very soon. Uh, but we are getting a few uh, messages uh, coming in. So um, we'll, we'll get to take that. But let's take a very short break, uh, and we'll be back very short.
Welcome back, dear viewers. Inshallah, uh, enjoyed that 10 second break before uh, we're trying to get the, the, the Facebook comments online. Uh, but the idea of hijab is being um, affiliated every time that a person talks about hijab. It's, it's being affiliated by a headscarf, which is, which is really misleading for some. Uh, why? Because a lot of people only think that if you cover the head, uh, the rest of the body is okay to show, or it's okay to to uh, to be outlined, if you will. Um, if if we were to go, even even and it's unfortunate in every single country now, um, you're, you're going to see women who are wearing different clothes. Um, if it's okay to you, that's okay. But for me, I'm just saying my opinion. Um, you see different women wearing very tight clothes, with like tight tight. What I mean by Lululemons, like by stretch pants. Uh, like jogging pants, it's it's you know, it's, it's, um, it's 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 crazy. I don't even want to get into uh, you know explaining uh, what that looks like, uh, but you guys know what I mean. So that wearing that and then wearing the headscarf is kind of misleading for um, the, the the person that actually wants to wear the hijab uh, properly. The Quran has described the hijab and has mentioned uh, the hijab eight times in different contexts. And if we were to go to Quran and see what the, what it has said about the head covering and the headscarf, um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's really amazing. But before we get to talk about the verses, um, let's go and check out the expert and what they have to say about tonight's topic. Um, and uh, we're, in, we're joined by uh, Sister Barak Hussain from Canada, the Muslim counselor from Canada. So let's go and check out what she has to say about tonight's topic. Assalamu alaikum. This is Sister Barak Hussain, psychotherapist, also known as the Muslim counselor. A very interesting topic today in terms of fashion and hijab. There's so many different views when it comes to this topic, whether it's religious, spiritual, psychological, and of course, personal. I'm just gonna focus today on a bit of the psychological and perhaps a little bit of the personal. So, we know from our religion what the Quran prescribes to us in terms of the hijab and in terms of how it's exemplified by the household of the Prophet in terms of how to wear the hijab. We know there's also cultural interpretations in terms of how we wear the hijab depending on the geographical region, the weather, at the customs and so on. Also, there's the generational uh, views in terms of how the hijab should be wear, uh, worn, rather. And uh, we also see it whether back in the Middle East or Southeast Asia or different parts of the world and how it's worn in the Western world. Now, the new phenomenon we see, of course, is fashion hijab. And I say that very loosely because, you know, there's so many mixed opinions on that. I do admire a well-put hijabi, where fashionable in the sense that she looks modest, covered in the right way, but also appealing to the senses, to the eyes in terms of, hey, that, that looks good, that looks professional, that looks polished. And it's exemplified in our faith as well in terms of how we put ourselves forward and how our parents should be. I personally believe that, especially here in the West, we do have responsibility in terms of how we present ourselves when we go to the workplace, when we go in the community, and because people look at us, um, a woman that wears a hijab, she's automatically seen as a Muslim and there's a huge responsibility there, sometimes unnecessary as well. In any case, the psychological effect when it comes to fashion hijab, we see all these bloggers out there who make these videos on how to mix your hijab with your makeup and what you should be wearing with your hijab and your makeup. That becomes very tricky in the sense that, all right, so I want to look good, but at the same time, you know, when I, I still have to observe what my religion tells me. It is very possible to do that. I don't see what the problem is there. It becomes a problem though when people start mixing things up. When you start put loading up the makeup with the hijab, you're defeating the purpose. You're attracting attention to your face, for example, or if you're wearing tight clothing, you're attracting attention to your body, even if you're completely covered. And I've heard this from people who are not Muslims, for example, why is she dressed this way? Isn't that defeating the purpose of wearing a veil? So, I mean, you get these opinions, and it's very clear in terms of is this proper hijab or not. Of course, everyone's going to have their own opinion. The psychological effect of this now comes down to, let's say, the young people who are looking at these bloggers or who are looking up to 
what the fashion industry is saying in terms of the newest hijab style or the newest clothing uh, article of clothing or the newest way of doing your eyebrows and your eyes and your makeup and so on and so forth. You have these young people looking up to this and thinking this is how I'm supposed to look like. You just have to look at social media to see the effects of how people are striving to look a certain way to fit in or to look attractive. And yes, attracting the opposite gender. You're missing the point. You're defeating the purpose again of what hijab is supposed to be all about. It's about modesty and not showing off your features. So again, think about what is the purpose of putting these pictures out there? Um, what is the message behind it? Is it necessary? I have been given this advice myself many times and um, I'm passing it along as well. So fine line between self-esteem, understanding your self-worth, your development, your growth, and not comparing yourself to others when you do see people out there putting these images and trying to get you to buy their products and understanding, you know, yeah, you can have hijab and fashion in a respectful, modest way without crossing the lines that is prescribed to us by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>
Um, we'll, we'll say all of them and then we'll write their, their names down. Uh, Layla Berry, she says, in some parts of the world, yes, it does, especially in America. Uh, we have the Nike hijab scarf. Uh, and now uh, runaway, oh, runway shows dedicated to hijab and Muslim clothing uh, lines and store ads uh, featuring models who are wearing hijab. It is definitely b uh, becoming part of the fashion industry. Um, yes, it has. Thank you very much. Uh, Hassan Ali, he says, absolutely hijab has turned into a fashion industry. It's a business worth millions. Our sisters will only uh, pick abaya with designs. Uh, the purpose is to protect oneself from strangers' eyes, not to attract the viewers. Okay, thank you very much uh, for all of you guys that joined us tonight. Uh, just, a, just one sec to, to, to write all the names down. Or we'll rate them uh, after the show because we have only one minute left. Um, now, um, to, to say one point, as everyone was mentioning, um, it is important to keep one thing in mind, is that you know th 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 there's no problem with you um, w buying a hijab from H&M or Dolce & Gabbana or Gucci or Versace or whatever. The important part is to keep it modest. You know, the important part, you know, you are, you're already attractive. Men will look at you. Um, so it has to go along with the Islamic modesty code. Um, a few points. Uh, of how Islam uh, presents hijab. Um, one very important thing, um, and, and number one, uh, should include, um, and it shouldn't be um, rousing. Number two, not too tight showing off the shape of the body, as I said earlier on. Number three, not, to s not see through uh, uh, or, or thin material, and that's important. Like Lululemons, that's no-no. Uh, but number four, must be covering the entire body except for the face and hands. Um, the hijab should not be an uh, adornment itself, and that's very important as well. So next time uh, when you see a fashion company ad featuring a model uh, for wrapping hijab, for you know uh, a wrap or a hijab uh, with with a model, that's good. You know we, we we are seeing that the West is introducing this ideology, but at the same time we need to keep it within the Islamic boundaries. So that's it for tonight. Tonight, we're trying to talk about this topic, and you guys got the answer for it. Thanks for everyone that participated. Uh, this is Ahmed Ali once again. Hashtag LNT 2AM. Stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.